Hi guys, welcome back to the Navarro's channel. My name is Alexa and today I have another DIY tutorial video for you guys. So today's video will be what you can do with... Oh my gosh, birds! Oh my gosh, there's a bird inside! Oh, I hope you don't get stuck, it looks like a baby. Oh. Okay, done with that. I really did save a bird. And it was a baby bird and it was really cute. Anyway, again. So this tutorial is about what you guys can do with one yard of fur fabric. Um, a year or two ago, I made that DIY fur coat and um, it's probably one of my most popular videos. And I just had so much leftover material that like just throughout the years, I've been making small little projects here and there. And I'm pretty sure like whoever has made like a fur coat from that tutorial probably still has a bunch of scraps. So I thought it would be useful to show you guys what you guys can make with one yard of fabric. Um, I was able to make five different little things out of it and I still had um, a pretty good like square left of material. Like you could copy the Fenties and just like cut strips out of them and glue them onto slippers and you can make more keychains for your girlfriends. I got a lot of requests for these fur hair ties um, that I posted on my Instagram. Um, so I'm probably just gonna make a bunch for my girlfriends and my family, whoever wants them. So with the one yard of fabric, I was able to make one fur coat, which was a little bit oversized to begin with. So if you shrink it down a bit to fit you, then you could have way more fabric leftover. I also made fur hair ties, a fur faux fox tail keychain, oh my god that's so hard to say, and I made this fur clutch that I actually thrifted a similar one and I was so obsessed with it I thought I needed to make one of these as well. Last but not least I also made a fur stole which I absolutely love. You could use it as a stole or you could even like throw it onto your jackets and use it as a collar. So if you guys want to learn how to make any of these fur tutorials, keep watching. To start these tutorials you'll need tracing or pattern paper, a ruler, pins, fabric shears, scissors, a marker, fabric pen, jacket for reference, one yard of lining, one yard of faux fur. Trace the body of your jacket on tracing paper with the collar and sleeves tucked in. Use your ruler to straighten out the edges. Fold the tracing paper in half along the center front edge. Place another piece of tracing paper on top and trace around the body pattern. Add an extra 1 inch to the center front if you want your coat to overlap a little. On your center front line, mark how deep you want the neck opening to drop. I dropped mine 7 inches. Connect the neck drop to the shoulder and cut out both patterns. Take another piece of tracing paper and fold it in half horizontally. Match the top of the jacket sleeve to the fold and mark all four corners of the sleeve onto the tracing paper. Connect the points with your ruler and take your front body to match up the sleeve openings. Adjust the measurement so that the sleeve opening matches. The top shoulder should be a little longer on your front body pattern because it will be a seam. When cutting your fur, remember to cut the patterns with the fur hairs going the same way. This is especially important for your body patterns. Place your back pattern on the wrong side of the fur and trace with your fabric pen. Place your patterns as close to the edge as possible. When cutting fur, you want to cut as close to the base as possible. This will prevent you from cutting the tips of the fur. Repeat with the front pattern and cut two front bodies. To utilize one yard of fabric, you can cut your sleeve patterns with the fur going diagonally or sideways. You won't really be able to tell because it's on the sleeve. Trace and cut your patterns on the lining material. Once you have all your pieces ready, you should have two back pieces, four fronts, and four sleeve pieces. Lay your back body flat and place both front bodies on top. Sew both shoulder seams with a straight stitch. 
Open the piece so that the right side is facing up. Place the top of the sleeve onto the outer point of the shoulder seam and sew along the edge. Fold the coat back up so that the shoulder seam is upright. You can now sew along the bottom edge of the sleeve and down the side of the body. You will also need to leave a 4-5 to five inch gap in the sleeve seam. Repeat the same sewing process to all the fur pieces. Remember to tuck the fur hairs as you sew. Compared to my previous fur coat video, this time I'm able to sew using a sewing machine because the fur is much shorter. Take the fur and lining side and match them together with right sides facing each other. Sew up the center front along the neckline and back down the center front. You can now sew along the bottom edge, leaving a 7 to 9 inch gap. Using that 7 to 9 inch gap, reach in and turn the coat inside out. Using the gap in the sleeve seam, pull out the bottom gap and close up the seam. With your hand still inside the sleeve gap, thread your hand through the sleeve so it pokes out through the end. Grab the end of the sleeve and bring it through the sleeve gap. You will also need to pull out the end of the lining sleeve. Pin the ends of the sleeves together with the right sides facing each other. Work your way around the edge of the sleeve, tucking in the fur as you go. Once you've sewn the sleeve end, you can push it back through the gap. Fold in the sleeve gap and top stitch to complete the seam. Repeat to the other sleeve and you are finished with your coat. You will need E6000 glue, a clutch opener, I bought this one for 6 bucks in downtown, needle and thread, a large chain which is optional, large jump rings which is also optional if you are doing the large chain, and pliers. Start by taking a scrap of tracing paper and folding it in half vertically. Place the opener on the paper and mark half an inch on both sides. Connect the sides and cut. Place your pattern on the back of your fur and trace with your fabric pen. Cut your piece out and then cut that piece in half. Match your two pieces with the right sides facing each other. Place the opener on top and mark where the hinge ends. Sew along the side and bottom beginning and ending at the marks. Fold the corners down and sew a straight stitch across the corner. This step is a bit tough because there is a lot of fur so go really slow so you don't break a needle. Cut the corner off and any excess seam allowance. Once you flip your clutch inside out, you are now ready to attach the handle. With a small stick, spread your glue inside of the handle. Carefully wedge the edge of the clutch into the crevice. I do not know why I'm only using like three fingers, but yeah, I think I might have had glue on my fingers then. I use my scissors to push the edge further into the handle. That way I can ensure that the edge is totally touching the glue. Let your clutch dry for a couple hours so that the glue can set. 
Once the glue has dried a little bit, cut off the excess seam allowance and stitch the fur edge to the handle. You can totally stop here or you could do a little extra credit and add the gold chain. To add the chain, open up the jump ring and loop it around the handle or wherever you want. Attach the gold chain before closing up the ring. I changed my mind and moved the ring to the hinge because it wasn't closing properly. For the stole, you want to find the largest or longest scrap that you have left. For my scraps, I took a large section and folded it in half to make two long rectangles. I squared off one end of the rectangle so I can have a clean edge to connect the two. Match the two ends so that the right sides are facing each other. Once you sew down the side, you have yourself a long fur stole. You can be lazy and stop there or complete the stole with lining. For the lining, I just placed the lining material on top and traced along the stole edge. Cut it out and place it on top of the right side of your stole and sew along the edge leaving a 4 inch opening. Cut off the corners and any thick excess seam allowance. Turn your stole inside out and top stitch the opening to close up the seam. This stole is fairly easy and is a great add-on to jackets or dresses. For the faux fox tail, the only new thing that you'll need is a keychain ring. Cut out a piece of scrap that is cone shaped. Pull the edges together so that all the fur is in the inside. I found it was easier for me to pin the edges together first before sewing. Hand sew the edges using a blanket stitch. And thank you to all the viewers who finally told me what this stitch is called. You want to stop 3 fourths of the way down so you have room to turn it inside out. Invert your tail and hand stitch the bottom opening if needed. I actually left mine open because mine was, uh, it wasn't that noticeable. Sew a wide straight stitch along the top edge of the opening. Before finishing your seam, open a jump ring and pierce it through the edge of the fabric. This will be the connector between your tail and the key ring. Pull the end of the thread to close up the opening and knot the stitch. Attach your keychain to the jump ring and close it up to finish your tail.
All you need for this tutorial is 1 inch elastic. Cut small 1 inch rectangles that are 5 inches wide. I literally just picked out whatever scraps were in the trash. Cut 2 inches of elastic and sew each end to the ends of the fur. Fold the fur in half with the wrong sides together and sew a zigzag stitch down the edge. That literally took 5 seconds and now you can get your Britney on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you guys did enjoy this video because I really had a fun time filming all these tutorials. So if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Um, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, don't forget to do so down below. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Blog11. And if any of you guys do any of these tutorials, definitely tag us because we love to see your guys' take and how you guys input your own style into what you guys make from these tutorials. I believe that's it and I will see you guys in our next video. Bye! Right, I'm gonna try to do some like Snow White Pocahontas stuff right now, try to capture it. Hold on.